Uh, it came out at 11 o'clock. No doubt people like you had a fair sniff of it um, before that. So I'm not going to say you've had two hours to digest. You had a bit, little bit longer than that. But broadly speaking, how many out of 10? Ooh, how many out of 10? That's a tough question to start. Listen, there was always going to be an element of compromise here. I mean, I've seen so many of these reviews down the years, as old yeah. as I am now. And there's always going to be an element of compromise because there are two... The, the starting point for two things that don't, are not that compatible. You've got the 18 county system on the one hand and the 100 on the other, and they're not that compatible. And Andrew Strauss's group are trying to find some way of bridging the two to provide a schedule that everybody is happy with, and that's players, supporters, counties. And, and within all those groups, everybody will have a slightly different view of things. A 20-year-old county cricketer is going to have a very different view from a 40-year-old county cricketer. And the test match ground is going to have a very di different view from a non-test match ground. So it's fiendishly difficult to find something that everybody is happy with. I, I would say that it's a better compromise than the compromise we have now, if that's the way I might put it. It's a better model than, than the model we have now, uh, if it gets through. And yeah. the two, the two the 17 I mean, recommendations, aren't there? And 15 of them, they have power over, and two, they don't. Yeah, exactly. 15 will be waved through, and the vast majority of those, nobody will complain about. I mean, you know, beefing up the Lions programme, um, rewarding counties for producing top-class test cricketers, all these are fairly obvious things to, to try and promote, and they, they will just be waved through by the executive and the board. The two contentious things are really the schedule uh, and the, the future schedule of the county game, the domestic game, and that's where it will get sticky. Tell me more about that. Well, they're, the, what, what they're trying to do is find a balance, really, for players, clubs, supporters. At the moment, the argument is that there's too much cricket, too little time to rest, too little time to practice and train. I mean, that's not entirely true. What there is is too much cricket at wrong parts of the season. And of course, the 100 being plonked in at August makes the, the pinch points on the schedule very tricky indeed, because you're basically taking a month out of the season and trying to fit everything in. So what they're asking for is a reduction in county championship games, although not necessarily first class games, because they're going to play three of those slightly random games in August. There's going to be a shorter, sharper 50-over competition at the start of the year. A fewer, fewer games in the blast played concurrently with the championship, and then the 100 sits there in August. So that's the schedule that they're kind of looking at. So you can see that the 50-over tournament is being shifted to the start of the year. Shorter, sharper in April with a knockout element. Then the blast and the championship running together, May, June, July, championship finishing in September and the 100 sitting in August with three random first-class games, whether you call it the cricket festival, whatever, maybe Lancashire, Yorkshire games, local derbies, whatever, played underneath the 100. And that, it's a more coherent schedule than we have now, but there's still going to be a lot of counties who will bulk at some of those changes. In particular, the counties that will be unhappy will be those fearing for their future, which are the non-test match grounds and the non-100 venues. Clubs like Kent, Essex, Somerset, I think we've already seen some yeah. reaction from some of those clubs this morning. Those are the clubs that will be fearing for their future. And of course, they need 12 out of 18 counties to vote it through. Somerset have made the point that they won't get any cricket anywhere near them because the nearest 100 um, franchise is Welsh Fire in Cardiff. So in the school holidays, you know, where do we send our kids to be inspired by cricket when they're off school? That's the argument. And that's going back to my point at the start. You've got these almost two incompatible structures at the moment, the 18-county game and then a you know, franchise or whatever you want to call it in, in, in August, the 100, with just eight venues. And you're trying to bring these two together. In effect, really, what that is is a view of the past against, with, uh, against the future and a view of history and tradition against the forces of commercialization. And they clash, and it ain't easy to bring them together. And what Strauss's group is trying to do is do that, and they'll have a battle on their hands to get the final two bits over the line. And it's a kind of philo philosophical argument as well. I mean, county cricket, for over 100 years, has kind of meandered along, really, as a backdrop to the English summer. It's never really been solely about high performance or producing England players. It's just been kind of part of the English summer. 
and Strauss's review is looking at that through a very different lens, a high performance lens. Uh, just as a layman, a six team county championship as, as we see there, which we've, yeah. we've known about through leaks for a little while now, as a player, is that quite boring? You've, you've, you've got f five opponents in county championship? Five opponents that you'll play, play twice, so yeah. there'll be ten, ten games. Um, I think, I don't know whether it's boring as a player. I mean, if you're in that top division and the standard is very high and because it's a limited first division, premier division, all the best talent funnels through to there. That's what they're obviously hoping, to drive all the best players into this top echelon to try and increase the standard of that first division so that it, what it does is reduces the gap between that and test match cricket. I don't think players would find it boring, but you'd want to be in that top six. You don't want to be in the, in the tier below. Because the danger is the rich get richer and the, and the poor get poorer. Yes, and, uh, you, and eventually you lose something. You lose Derbyshire or whoever you lose. Exactly. And, and that's really the fundamentals, you know, that I talked about at the moment, at the start, that Andrew Strauss is seeing this through a, a very much a high performance lens. And is, is, can the county game produce enough, good enough England players for the England team to thrive? But that's not been what the county game has, has been about for over 100 mm. years. So it's quite a... As I say, it's like a philosophical debate that they're having here. What really is county cricket about? And that's a, that's a fundamental debate, yeah. What about the ball? Um, the suggestion is that we should play with the kookaburra because it makes life less easy in domestic cricket for seam bowlers. We encourage the spinners, they have to get more opportunities. I mean, this is a minor part of, of the review, but again, it, it, it touches on the point we've just talked about, that, that they want to trial the kookaburra because they want county cricket to emulate, as best it can, international cricket around the world. There are lots of people, and I'd be one in, in this actually, who would say that the Duke's ball provides variety and interest in the county game. And that actually it makes English cricket slightly unique, that when you go to the subcontinent, you play against spin. When you go to Australia, you play on hard bouncy pitches. The challenge in England has always been the ball moving and seaming and swinging and the Duke's ball provides that variety and interest. Um, so I, I actually don't particularly like the Kookaburra. I, I like the Duke's ball, um, but I can understand why they would want to trial the Kookaburra here to provide conditions which are more akin to international cricket in the same way, for example, that in Australia. They actually trialled using the Dukes ball in their mm. Sheffield Shield before they came to try and win the Ashes back a, a few series ago. Grass is always greener wherever you are. <laughs> um, it, so the, the forward from Sir Andrew Strauss to this uh, report says, we've set a clear ambition for England to be the world's best team across all formats, across all formats, within five years for a sustained period of time. Discuss. Well, his argument, uh, and this is certainly true, is that the England team have been the number one test team for very limited periods of time in its history. The 1950s, for sure, a bit under Sir Andrew, just after yeah. 2010. But actually, not, not for long periods of time. Um, and, of course, until the 2019 World Cup, England hadn't won a 50-over World Cup a, a, as well. It won the T20 in 2000 and whenever it was in the Caribbean, 2010. Um, and, and that's the lens that he is looking at county cricket through here to provide better players for the national team to become more competitive. There are lots of supporters out there who would say, well, I just like county cricket as it is. It provides a, an opportunity for me to spend my days in the summer watching a nice game. And that's uh, almost two different views coming together or clashing. Yeah.